The men that we were picking up were jubilant at finally getting out after many weeks in solitude. Not so for the men that we were leaving behind. Welcome to Flying BC, a podcast about the people, planes, and aviation adventures in British Columbia and Canada, with your host, Warwick Patterson. Hey everyone, this is a bonus episode of Flying BC, with Tim Cole reading a story from his book and memoir, Tight Floats and Tailwinds. If you'd like to get a copy of your own, I'll put a link in the show notes to where you can get it. If you're enjoying the Flying BC podcast, please consider leaving a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to the show. Share the shows on your social channels or head over to patreon.com slash flyingbc to become a patron. Enjoy this excerpt read by the author, Tim Cole. This is a, uh, uh, this is a story taken from my boy, a book, uh, Tight Floats and Tailwinds, Bush Pilot to Bureaucrat and Back. Uh, by W.T. Tim Cole, and it's in a uh, chapter of Laurentian stories. So this is earlier on in uh, my career, and it's uh, uh, this story is called A Miner's Threat. Shefferville, Quebec, July 23rd and 24th, 1969. <clears throat> CFRDA, Romeo Delta Alpha, was a turbo beaver and she was my first jet-powered aircraft. Not a pure jet, but a Pratt & Whitney PT-6 turboprop engine. It made the Stoll, short takeoff and landing de Havilland Beaver, akin to an Olympic athlete on steroids. Its takeoff and landing performance were outstanding. It was these traits that made the following story possible. During the 1969 summer season, I was working from a Laurentian, uh, Laurentian's most northern base at Squaw Lake, located at Shefferville, Quebec. The town site was developed in 1954 and was the terminus for the Quebec North Shore and Labrador Railway, Railroad. The Iron Ore Company of Canada, IOC, founded the railroad and town to mine the largest iron ore deposits in Canada. The town site is in Quebec but the adjacent mines straddle the Quebec and Labrador border. In the summer of 1969, there was a prolonged strike at the mine. One of the major effects on our operation was the supply of aviation fuel. We did have access to what was available in town, but no additional fuel was being shipped north on the company-owned railroad, which was also on strike. As the summer and the strike wore on, much of the flying time for our piston-powered aircraft was cut back due to the aviation fuel shortage. This was not true for me, as the Turbo Beaver was approved to burn Arctic diesel, and there was a huge supply available. I was flying full bore to make up for the cutback of the other aircraft. The Geological Survey of Canada, GSC, we're using Bell 47 helicopters for exploration in the remote areas in the interior of Labrador, and we were conducting all of their resupply. Their helicopters burned avgas, and they had pre-planned their fuel requirements well in advance. The result was that we had a virtual mountain of 10-gallon kegs of 8087 avgas stored on the Squaw Lake seaplane base's dock, waiting to be flown out to the GSC camps. It should be noted that our living quarters were immediately adjacent to this fuel dump. After the strike had been on for more than a month, we were approached by IOC to fly into the mine. There were a number of supervisors staying behind the picket lines in the huge iron ore open pit mine area that extended for several miles. One of their key duties was to keep uh, critical water pumps running that if shut down, would allow one of the mines to flood, and that event would be irreversible and would cost many millions of dollars. As the supervisory staff had been in the mine for many weeks, the company wanted to exchange them with a fresh crew. Now, as IOC was one of our major uh, customers, and also the fact that uh, the Laurentian was a public carrier, 
the company made the decision to honor their request. I was chosen to complete the, the task using the Turbo Beaver with its stole flight characteristics. It was really a job for a helicopter, but none were available, so a fixed wing operation it would be. Shefferville is located in a valley that runs north-south uh, with the Labrador Trough. The mines were located on a ridge west of town that was about 900 feet higher than the town site. There was a narrow fold near the top of the ridge, and there was a small lake located in the center of the big open pit mines that was just suitable for the Turbo Beaver. I doubt very much if anyone has ever been into the site with an airplane prior to or since this event. On the 23rd of July, with minimum fuel on board to keep the aircraft light, I flew over to Iron Arm, just a few miles to the east of town, to pick up the replacement crew. At the last minute, one of the men refused to board the airplane, as he thought it was too dangerous for him to participate. The remainder of the supervisors boarded the aircraft, and off we went. I made a large detour to the south to avoid overflying the town and alerting the miners as to what we were up to. The wind was blowing quite strong from the north, so it was a straight-in approach and land. It was like landing in a teacup with steep sides all around the landing site. The men that we were picking up were jubilant at finally getting out after many weeks in solitude. Not so for the men that we were leaving behind. As the wind was strong from the north, my plan was to take off to the north, stay very low, and hide behind the small ridge that was between the mine workings and the town site in the valley below. As I climbed up over the lip of the mine and tried to stay right on the deck, I found I was faced with an array of power lines, derricks, cranes, and other structures. I had no option but to climb a little higher until I was well north of the mines and the town site before I circled back to the east and landed at Squaw Lake. The next morning, a deputation of angry miners arrived at our seaplane base. I'm not sure if I was seen climbing out over the mine site or if it was the arrival of the absent supervisors back in town or a combination of both that drew them out to our operation. A big burly miner confronted me and said, You've been in the mine. I acknowledged that yes, I had flown into the mine at the direction of our company and that we were a public carrier and open to all comers, and in this case, IOC, the miner. You'll not go into the mine again. He walked over to the mountain of Avgas stored in our big old crib dock and patted one of the 10-gallon kegs of Avgas. Few rounds from a 30-30 wouldn't do your operation much good. We didn't go into the mine again. Thanks again for listening. Stay tuned for more great shows coming up. You can reach me on Instagram at Flying British Columbia or email me through the website flyingbce.com. Fly safe, and I'll see you at the airport. <laughs>